Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach and today I'm talking about bad communication on first and second dates, okay? So this was a question from a viewer and they basically wanted to know, you know, examples of bad communication on first and second dates. So one of the worst things that you could do um, in the way that you communicate with someone that you're on a date with is if you become too miserable, talking about miserable things, talking about negative things too much, um, and uh, wallow in your own self-pity, basically. Like, if you're going through struggles, and you're going through stuff that is making you feel quite miserable recently, it's not a good idea to unload that onto the person that you've only just met and you've only gone on a couple of dates with, or you're on the first date with. It's not a good idea to do that. The point of a date is to have a fun and enjoyable experience together where you can get to know that person and to figure out if they're the right fit for you so if you just sit in there talking about all your negative stories first of all you're going to look very unattractive because if you want someone to be more attracted to you and you want the date to go well I would suggest talking about things in a positive light um and talking about things that are actually good, and try to avoid topics that make you feel sad, um, that are sad, um, and because if you are making, if you are feeling negative, and you're talking about negative things, you're going to make the person that you're on a date with feel negative, and therefore they're going to associate negative feelings with you. If you want someone to like you, they need to associate positive feelings towards you, because if they associate negative feelings towards you, they're going to be repelled by you. No one likes to be around someone that's negative all the time, right? But if you're positive and you can make them feel happy and uplifted, then they're going to want to spend more time with you, right? They're going to be drawn to you and want to spend time with you because you make them feel good, okay? Um, So don't talk about things that are too miserable. If you are going through struggles right now and the topic just happens to come up, um, put a positive twist on it, right? So let's say... Um, you know, it just happens to come up that you're going through some money struggles right now and it's really bringing you down. You know, if, if that's what's going on and you're having some issues like that, you could say something like, yeah, I'm having a bit of trouble with money recently, but, you know, I'm learning a lot of stuff and I know I'm going to be better off eventually. That's all you need to say and then you just switch it to a different topic and you talk about something different, right? Because obviously you don't want to feel miserable either. So you don't want, you know, you want to avoid those topics too because sometimes if you're discussing something that feels sad and makes you feel sad then it it can really drop the mood and you might not be able to get out of that funk if you get into that mindset so you want to you know try and move the conversation along onto something that's a bit more positive a bit more uplifting um and one of the ways you can do that is you can just by you know switching the conversation from about yourself and your troubles to the person that you're on a date with and what they're what's going on in their life you know but hopefully you know try and think of something happy to to, to talk about like you could ask them oh what were some of your like happiest memories as a child or something like that you know just bring up something hot you know happy um so that the, the 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 mood can be a little bit more uplifted okay and so another thing that can be bad is if you just start talking about what you want to talk about um so basically being selfish one of the uh, the great things that you can do to get someone to like you is to become very interested in them and their life. Because, you know, usually as people, we are quite self-centered. So, you know, talk about things that they would be interested in talking about. And also, you know, obviously, you know, it's something that you want to know as well. So, you know, when you go out on a date with someone, what you're trying to find out is who is this person? Is this person right for me? You know, I need to find out, you know, uh, what I do, I, I want to find out basically if we're a good fit. So you want to learn about their lifestyle. You want to learn about what their values are. You know. So you know, ask questions about that. Obviously, you know, they're questions that they're going to love to answer because they're about it's about them. But also, you're going to love to know these things because you're trying to figure out if this person is the right fit for you. So you should tailor your questions to benefit both of you so they'll have a good time talking about themselves and you'll have a good time learning about them so you can know if this is the right person for you so talk about what they're interested in talk about um what they like okay don't just keep the conversation about you 
and um, topics that you find comfortable talking in because I see a lot of people doing this they talk about a topic that they know a lot about because they want to seem smart in front of the other person but the other person just slowly gets bored because um, they're talking about something that's only only they're interested in basically so you can see the other person slowly get bored because they're talking about some you know arbitrary topic that doesn't really matter that much like it could be the person's job field like it could be about a, a video game or something like that and if that person isn't interested in that sort of thing then um, they're going to find it really boring and they're not going to want to continue dating you if they find it too boring okay so you want to talk about interesting things things that interest you obviously as well because obviously if you're with someone right if you're on a date with someone and you are attracted to them you should be absolutely fascinated by them right and you might be thinking, yeah, but I want to talk about what I want to talk about. But it's like, but aren't you not interested in the person who's sitting across from you? Surely you should be interested in them and you'd love to find out who this person is, right? Now, obviously, it goes both ways. They're obviously going to ask questions about you as well. But um, you don't want to just sit there and talk about things that um, you only feel comfortable talking with because you feel smart in that area, right? Just talk about normal human type things like people's values lifestyles talk about those kinds of things because if you learn all that stuff you're going to figure out very quickly if this is the right person for you so a good book on this and it's in my recommended books um is how to win friends and influence people and if you would like to see the other books that i recommend my clients and viewers then please go up to the description of this video and you'll be able to find them um and they're basically all of the information in those books i wish i could just download and put into everyone's brains who comes across my channel and all of the clients that I, that I have. Um, if I could put all of that info into your brains, then it would solve 95% of your personal problems and your romantic problems. At least that's from my point of view anyway. Um, so how to win friends and influence people will really help with your communication style, how to get better at communicating and how to be a good conversationalist. <clears throat> so another thing that can be um, bad on the first and second dates is having too many childish innuendos, too many like sexual innuendos, um, because you wanna have some class basically, right? And if you are always saying innuendos and you're always talking about like genitals and boobs or whatever, yeah, and you're always making jokes about that sort of thing, it just makes you look like a horny teenager who doesn't have that much sexual experience. If you're always bringing up sex, and like genitals and stuff and laughing at that kind of thing, it just makes you look like a child, right, who hasn't had that much sexual experience, okay? You know, you don't, you don't want to come across as a horny teenager that has no ex sexual experience. And usually it's the ones that don't have as much sexual experience that laugh about, you know, boobs and, and stuff all the time, right? So try to avoid any, or at least too many innuendos. I think one here and there is okay, but try to read the room because sometimes, you know, it can, that can really put someone off you, right? If you if it happens too much and it's really, really childish. Sometimes you can do an innuendo that's flirtatious. Yeah, but most of the time, most innuendos can be extremely, extremely childish and you just want to avoid it. So it's best to just avoid it on the first and second dates, okay? Just keep your mouth zipped when it comes to innuendos, right? And just save them for your, you know, your innuendos for your friends, basically. Um, so the aim of a date really is to, you know, to find out as much as possible about them. So that's the way your communication should be, right? I need to find as much as possible I can about this person, um, because I need to find out if I'm wasting my time or not. I need to find out if this is the right person for me, but also it should be a fun experience too, right? So this means that, um, you know, you're having a good time. You're not being too serious. You're talking about lighthearted things most of the time, but also you're talking about things that are, you know, to, to do with them, trying to figure out who this person is. But you don't want to take it too seriously. It should be a fun experience. You don't want to be like sitting there interrogating them. It should be, it should flow naturally, basically. And how to win friends and influence people, um, that book will help you with that sort of thing, with how to communicate in that, in that way. So, and when I say having a fun time together as well, um, you know, fun doesn't necessarily mean something, at least to something sexual, right? Fun can be great conversation, doing interesting things, having a laugh and being playful together and acting like you're two little kids having fun, 
you know, you gotta, you know, imagine like when you first met uh, your best friend, like when you was at school, or the good friends that you had while you was at school. You know, you two became like instant buddies. You had like you was instantly on the same wavelength, um, and you had a really fun time. Now, unfortunately, you might go on some dates, and that just doesn't happen. And if that you don't get on that wavelength, then it's probably not a good idea to continue dating them. Okay, because some people you're gonna click with, some people you're not gonna click with. If you don't, in, if you don't click with the person that you're dating, then it's a good idea to back off. Even if they're beautiful, even if they're absolutely ten out of ten gorgeous, and you would love to bang them. Right, if you'd love to bang them and they look amazing, you know, but you don't click with them, you're wasting your time. Okay, you're wasting your time. Maybe it'd be good, you know, someone to practice dating with, but if you're not feeling it with them, then it's a good idea to to no, not pursue it. Okay, you're wasting your time, essentially. Okay, um, so that's my advice on bad communication on first and second dates. Avoid those kinds of things. Definitely get how to win friends and influence people because that will really help with being a better conversationalist and getting to know people and getting someone to like you um, and uh, learning some good conversation techniques. So thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to get in touch with me personally and you'd like coaching with me, then please go to www.christineloverage.com. Thank you so much for watching and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye.